introduction on this campus, our double alumnus, member of our national championship winning 1989 and 1991 football teams, and the new head coach of Miami Hurricanes football, Mario Cristobal. But before, before I take my seat back, before I take my seat back in the audience, there is one more thing. On behalf of your hometown team, let me present you with your new Miami Hurricanes football jersey. Here it is. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome home. Thank you. Man, I never thought I'd wear number one or a single digit jersey ever in my life. No offensive lineman ever get to wear single digits, so thank you very much. Um, wow, where do you start? Um, start by saying that I'm honored and humbled beyond what words can describe. I mean, this is, uh, this is strong, and this hits as hard as it can hit. And there's a lot of people I want to thank um, before I say a few words, um, because watch, I, I'm seeing so many familiar faces, I'm trying to get to the meat of some of the things I want to say. But what an honor. My God, what an honor. Thank you for everyone that's shown up today. So many people that I had a chance to play with or coach or mentor. Um, this is incredible. It's just the beginning. Um, but I'd like to thank President Frank, of course, and all the people involved in this, and this commitment to make this a reality for my family, for myself, for our program. Uh, Rudy Fernandez, Jose, Jose Mas, Manny, Manny Cadre, Joe Echavadilla, Jen Strolley for all the stuff you've been doing. Um, incredible. Cannot thank you enough. These processes have been, just make it, you make it smooth. You, you generate more excitement and drive and enthusiasm as we get this thing rolling. My beautiful wife, Jessica, my partner, best friend. Um, without you, this is not possible. The MVP of the house, that's who she is. My boys, Mar Mateo, Rocco. It's on, buddy. All right. I love you. And I'm, I'm proud to have you here, surrounded by our family that you've never had a chance to meet. And now you will. And you're going to love it. So, so, how about them canes? No? How about them canes? I can't help but look across and I see, right away I see offensive linemen. I'll always see offensive linemen. I remember Brian McKinney coming in at 270 pounds, having to walk him across campus, try to get him into the School of Engineering. Brett Romberg, there he is. Six, two and a half at least, right? Okay. Joaquin, I, where do I start, right? Coming in at 220 pounds, you mastered the reverse pancake and then made it a pancake. It was unbelievable, but I say this because as we talk about building a championship program, as we talk about taking things and elevating the standard to elite levels, it all starts with work. And as I look at these young men and I look at some of the other guys that I played with or coached with, I remember, I remember things like when they had to get an IV for going way too hard during two days, when you had to visit them at the hospital due to an unforeseen injury, when you saw the trials, all the adversity they had to overcome to elevate the standard here at the University of Miami, you realize more than ever that it's about the work. It's about the time invested. Because without that, it's not real. And it's time to go to work, okay? Um, we want to make sure that that's the program here is always a program that you can be proud of for the right reasons. A program of relentless competitors. Always, always a team that nobody wants to play. That's what we want to be. 
That's what you got to work to be because I can't proclaim that. I can't tweet that. We got to get together with these coaches, these young men, and make that a reality. We got to speak it into existence. We got to work that into reality. A team that's known for its resiliency, its toughness, its physicality. Physicality has to be real. How do you get there? You practice it. You rep it. You do the things that people aren't willing to do again and again and again, and you just keep getting after it. I'm going to get fired up, so it might sound like the locker room in a little bit, but that's all right. I want to be able to speak to the family, and I consider everyone here family. A lot of current players here. It meant the world to me to be able to go upstairs and share a few moments, most importantly, to let them know that for this thing to work, I got to get to know them. Because the best way to respect someone is to get to know them. And the only way to get to know someone is by investing time in them. And we're going to spend a lot of time together. And we're going to work together. We're going to hold each other accountable. Because that's what it takes. Without that, there's no foundation. Guys, we are Miami. We are the you. And every time you hear that, every time you see that on a shirt, on a commercial, at a game, that's got to mean everything. And we got to show it in everything that we do. Okay? Um, we want to make sure that this team is known for its physicality as well as its execution and its discipline. We play a tough schedule, whether it be at home or on the road. We want to make sure that we are known for that. That's our identity. That's our trademark. And you know what's going to make that a reality? Because I've been, I've been pretty far away. I don't know if you guys, I was in that, I was way, way across the country. But you're always watching because I see Greg Mark over here. I see a lot of guys, man, got to play with. Unbelievable guys. But when, the moment you put on that uniform and you play and you invest the world into that, it's different. It's different. And just saying it's not enough. You got to show them what you do. I am here. I'm a small piece of a big operation that's going to invest every ounce of my existence to make sure that we get to the level that we need to get to, okay? by bringing in the best people, the best staffing, high-level people of integrity, professionals, people that bring it, that it means as much to them as it means to us, and that they understand that, because that's the only way that it works here. But mentality, mentality, mentality. We have to understand the gift and the opportunity and the privilege that we have. That's what it means to be here. But I really want to say this before I go on. I really want the Hurricane Nation, the U family, the University of Miami, everyone that's ever touched it, been a part of it, went to school here, is a fan, the community around the country. We got to bring this thing tight. Everybody. We got to bring it in tight, and we got to bring it. Because when the U is on and the U brings it, there's nothing like it. And we got to get there. And it's going to take everybody. And I can't wait. Okay? I'll try to calm down a little bit now. Sorry. It's not game day yet. But uh, in terms of, uh, I want to hit on culture. Culture is important because it all starts with that. Early's on time. We had a chance to meet with the players. You got final exams now. Academic integrity. The prominence of the diploma here at the University of Miami is a different level. We got to understand that. We got to take pride in that. We got to hammer that. But how you do anything is how you do everything. You want to be an elite player, you got to be an elite student. Right? You can't have one or the other. The you, this culture is not a t-shirt. You put on when you want to and you take off when you don't want to do it. It's an every time thing. There are no little things. There are no little things. A lot of times coaches say, well, you know, you gotta do little things right. Well, if you gotta do them right, it's probably a big thing. So they're all big things. We wanna make sure that we approach everything in that manner. Wise choices and decisions. Making sure that all the choices we make, they might reflect on us, but they affect everybody. We got to represent in the community around the country. Every time we're on national TV, local TV, radio, media, whatever it may be. Um, but we're going to embark on a year round program. This blueprint that we're going to take on is a proven blueprint. It's the winter conditioning program. It's spring football. It's a fourth quarter program. It's the off season. It's game planning. Recruiting will be a relentless, relentless approach and effort to identifying and bringing in the best talent in the country that understands the importance of being a member of this university. I want to be around guys that they can't live without football. I got a feeling everyone here can't live. I mean, am I on the same page? Everybody here? Can we not live without football? Okay, good. Um, but 
it, to me, that's, I want to mention those things because they're important. Uh, we want to bring high capacity people. Uh, we want to bring in people that, again, truly understand and are dedicated and that understand the level of the investment made by the people that have made this a reality. I thank you from the bottom of my heart because you've made it real. And, and you've, you know, you brought me home, you know? And it was, it was difficult because I believe in pouring myself in a, the people you're around. And um, man, I, I just, I feel more driven, more motivated than ever. Um, I can't wait to get to work. Um, this show of support here is um, just poured all in, man. University of Miami was a game changer in my life. I've never been the same, never, because of my experience here. And I believe I owe it to anyone that wears that you. And I hope there's as many players here as there can be. When you experience it, when you do it right, it's a game changer for the rest of your life. And you get to be an impactful person to other people when you live for it. And, and we live for it and thrilled that we're here. Got a lot of work to do. Excited about that part. That's the part that really gets me going. That's the part that is going to be critical in laying the foundation and going forward. And the time is now. And, um, you know, before taking any questions, I do want to say this. I, I want to thank the University of Oregon and um, President Schill, Phil Knight, Rob Mullins, all those people, Eric Rodell, who are they, Chief, um, who was the other one, Hawk, it sounds like the A-team, right, Chief, Hawk, you know, man, all these guys, because they gave me a tremendous opportunity and they stood by me and uh, they're the best mentors that I've had and uh, they believed and they allowed me to work and uh, the results were something that we're very proud of and it's led to this opportunity here. But please know this, um, all in is all in. There's no in between. There's nothing, and that's what it's gonna take from all of us. I hope you're excited. I hope that you truly are feeling like the season's starting again because it's go time. And there's never a time to stop, man. We gotta go, and we gotta go, and we gotta go. I'm humbled and honored to be the head coach here at the University of Miami, which means I'm just a member of your family, and you're a member of mine, and let's get this thing right, okay? I am uh, very grateful to those that have come before. Let's honor them by the way we conduct ourselves on a daily basis. Let's go take this thing to a new level, man, all right? Thank you so much for being here. I'm open to questions, but let's, let's go. At, the, at this time, Coach Cristobal is gonna take questions from the media. And if there are any questions regarding the process of how this took place, will you please hold those? And Rudy Fernandez will answer those after the press conference. And once again, I'll remind you, the questions are from the press and from the media. Coach? Mario, hope you can hear me. Welcome, it's good to see you. Thank you. you. Uh, what was the moment for you like when you got to share the news with your family? your wife, your kids, and your family here in South Florida that you were coming? Whew. <laughs> like National Signing Day a little bit, right? Uh, an explosion. You know, as you, my family's here, my brother, his wife, my nephews, you know, my goddaughter, everybody's here. Um, my mom is, you know, she's close by in the hospital. She's fighting. She'll, she'll get the news, you know, when she's ready for it. You know, I don't, I don't want to cause more issues and have to have more care at the hospital, you know, when she knows. But uh, it's, I could imagine, man, um, it, it's, it's, it's difficult for me to say I'm 51. I'm 51 years old. And yet as I walk here, I said, <laughs> stop laughing, Joaquin. I know he's, he's starting with me already. But as I walk through this morning, you know, the things that come back to mind as if it was just yesterday. It's incredible. And I guess it just, it resonates. It's that strong of an impression that it just never leaves you. And so when that opportunity came up and it was gonna really happen, um, it was everything, right? Tears, joy, um, just absolutely awesome. Hey coach, uh, wanted to ask you about just the, the commitment to resources moving forward, right? Uh, how big of a factor was that for you 
deciding to come here, and just in general, the, the potential of the program moving forward with, with a bigger commitment to the program now. That was one of the critical pieces, to be honest with you. You know, football has, football has changed so much, and it continues to change. And a lot of people refer to it as an arms race. But the investment, people talk about a lot of times, and I think sometimes universities and colleges go the wrong way because they just collect talent or collect facilities as opposed to investing in people. And there's a big difference. And in having the opportunity to meet with, with these men and to realize the, man, the, the massive investment in making sure that these student athletes have the best chance for success, it was a, a huge overriding factor. And I learned that when I had a chance to go away and work at some different spots. I got to see how much it is invested in sports psychology, in nutrition, strength and conditioning, player development, professional development, bringing in speakers, bringing in, having NFL visits, having them come in and lecture and teach uh, your coaches about their systems, and techniques and fundamentals. So it's something that should never, ever stop because if you want to keep growing, you got to keep investing. And that was something that was, uh, it was mind blowing. It really was. And really excited to dig into that. What's going on, Mario? How are you doing? Ball as well. Always great to see you. Mic check. Oh, here we go. Um, they always talk about the pat. Job. How hard was it for you to keep those emotions in check over this time, knowing that this was your dream job and that opportunity finally came and fell in your lap? Well, I mean, to tell you the truth, I when I work, I work, and and when I was at uh, at Oregon, I did not see myself ever leaving because of how much I love the place and I love the people. And I think when you do it right, if this is truly a vocation, when you're at a place, you're fully in. And I was given that opportunity and we loved everything, absolutely everything. Um, so I guess the best way to say it, and I don't know if I'm answering your question or whatnot, but when you have the opportunity to play, I'm sorry, to play at a place and then come back and coach there with the experiences that you have had, surrounded by the people and the family that you know, your fondest memories are of. What's more powerful than that in this coaching profession? It doesn't make it easy. I'm being very honest. It's, it's difficult because of time invested. And I believe in people. I believe in pouring every ounce into people when you have the, the chance to make a difference in their life. You know, it's your job to be a blessing to them. So, but when something like this comes together, you just, you can't draw it up any better. So it's emotional, there's passion behind it, there's drive, there's energy, there's a, a sense of urgency to get to work right away because you want to get started. So try putting all those things into one with about 16 shots of Cuban coffee and two hours of sleep, and that's what you have. Hey, Mario, how's it going? Good. Um, you mentioned the commitment to resources being a huge factor. Have other coaches, as far as filling out your staff and reaching out to you around the country, now noticing that Miami is making this big commitment and has the recruiting of players have already started for you? Yeah, I, I, I actually, you know, joked with uh, Kirk Kerbstreet, you know, and said, hey, man, we, we ought to get you on the air more often and, you know, take a little jab at a resource or something because, you know, you created something. And so... But I want to I want to express myself in terms of that as in in the form of gratitude, because that's what I feel. I feel a tremendous amount of gratitude, because when someone has a vision, okay, and that vision that these men have put together is real, and the backing to make it a reality, there's no stopping it. As long as you have the right people in place that are energized and willing to go to a level of work and intensity that others can't fathom. And that's what we want to bring to the table and combine it with that opportunity. I thank you guys. I thank you guys because without that, it just doesn't work. It's hopeful, you know, you can wish about it, but it doesn't. So what that's going to do as well is not only attract, you know, the highest level talent out there, but also from a coaching standpoint, from an administrator standpoint, it just builds upon itself. It's a lot of momentum. Welcome back. Thank you. Uh, this program has not been at the top uh, for several years. It's obviously a different era, you know, from when you played here and coached. Um, with social media and the like making the world smaller and more accessible to recruits, what is it about Miami that makes you know you can get it done here? 
I, I would kind of veer the other way and say, what's it not about Miami, you know? What is there that you wouldn't want as a student athlete that wouldn't be here? Because everything is here. It's a first class university, academically, your diploma. You're in the hotbed of recruiting talent in the entire country. Your facilities have taken a, a tremendous upgrade and are gonna continue to grow. You're gonna be surrounded by the best coaches. Just look at the people sitting in the audience now and look what they accomplished here when the resources had not even hit this level yet. The tradition that has been established here by the players and the coaches that have passed through here has launched it into the public eye, into the minds of people of what Miami can be. Now that we're in a new era of college football where investment and resources reign supreme, right? They're very critical. Now that you add that piece as well, now sky's the limit. It's been proven. It's been done before with a lot less. Now it's an opportunity to take it to a new level with a lot more. Welcome back, Coach. Thank you. Gracias. I'm very happy, but and we're talking about the future and the recruiting and everything. Have you had a chance to evaluate the present talent that is on that is on campus at this point? Well, I know some of the guys just from crossover recruiting. You know, I, I was kidding with them to get today. I couldn't get you to go all the way across the country, so I had to come here to coach you. You know, so. Um, so I know a lot of the guys, and I know there's some really talented guys in the roster. And like any roster, you have, to, you have to recruit. You always have to elevate the caliber of athlete that you have on the roster, right? In college football, talent acquisition, personnel is the most critical factor. It is. You have a roster of 85 scholarship players. You have up to 30, 35 walk-ons, which is a critical part of any program. A lot of guys end up being great players that come in as walk-ons. And not a single one of those pieces can be something that you take for granted. Every single player, every single person in the building, every analyst, every GA, every coach has a role, okay? And there are certain criteria that we look for at every single position, and sometimes it's not exactly perfect, but you wanna get yourself to a level where you're hitting on those criteria because it's a proven blueprint, right? Certain specs, certain size, speed combinations, athletic ability, flexibility, balance and body control, combined with the right heart, the right mindset, the right work ethic, typically leads to tremendous success, okay? So, and, and you have some great talent evaluators here, some really good staff personnel here, some really good recruiting coordinators here that have done a really good job, and there's a lot to be built upon that as well. So, um, I'm gonna get off on a tangent here and just start talking about recruiting if you don't stop me, but I hope that kind of, it segues a little bit into what you're trying to get. It, uh, there's, there's some really talented guys on the roster. There's some guys, it's our job to develop. You know, it's our job to bring a power five, supersized development program to maximize their potential. And so they get out of it what they came here to do, and it's our job to get them there. And at the same time, bring in as much talent, hard work and talent as possible, because the best way to get your team better is to introduce competition. And you gotta introduce it every day in every way, and that cannot be a threatening thing. That has to be welcomed by the players, by the staff, because it's my job to challenge the staff as well. I gotta challenge coaches, I gotta challenge graduate assistants, analysts to be their very best. And the only way to do that is to introduce competition. That'll be at the core of everything we do in the program as we train in the off season. Hi Mario, welcome back. Speaking of recruiting, uh, one of the issues down here in the last few years or for many years has been not being able to keep the elite talent from this area here and you're actually part to blame for that, coming down here and getting people from schools you work for. How do you intend to change that? Well, it's not going to be through a tweet or a proclamation or anything of that nature. You, you've got to go grind. And when I, when I say grind, it's not just you know, uh, aimless effort and enthusiasm. It falls more along the lines of really digging deep into, when I say recruiting, because uh, there's an evaluation process. So part of me as I pause here, you've really got to dig deep into the fit. And then once you understand what that is, then you got to go all in and make sure that the family understands how important 
that person is to your program. You got to make sure they understand how they fit in your program. You got to make sure you have a clear path for them to achieve academic and athletic success. You got to make sure there's, there's a very clear vision drawn out and laid out for them to understand that this program is going to work its tail off to play for championships. It's not going to happen magically. You know, we got to work this thing into existence. And they got to be, it's, they got to see that you have true passion, that you're genuine and authentic. And it's probably the best part I love about this being the higher here. You know, obviously I'm biased and I'm the guy here now. So, but is because what's more real than one of your players coming back home to serve, to serve, because that's my job, to serve the university and the team to do everything humanly possible to keep taking steps and elevating step by step. And there's some painful steps you can't skip, mind you, but to keep going and going and going. And that's what we're, we're just gonna keep coming, man. You know, we're just gonna keep coming again and again and again and uh, strategize. You got some really good people here that have had some good strategies and we're on some guys now and we're gonna take this next week to try to close out the early signing period and then venture into the next one. So that's a little bit of the plan. Uh, hey, Coach, obviously you've recruited South Florida for a really long time here. Just, you know, what makes a South Florida talent special to you and um, just your approach and just sort of attacking that, I guess, and, you know, what, like the access to the talent, how much did that have a, to do with, you know, you making the decision to, to come here? South Florida in terms of it being special to me? Yeah, like the hotbed, you mentioned the hotbed, the, all that stuff, just the access to the talent yeah. and how important well, that was to you and coming over here and, right. you know, obviously right. you've done it for a long time, just what you've seen from South Florida talent that makes them so attractive to you. I know you've recruited them, even at Oregon. Guys play football down here not only because they want to, because they have to. It's life down here. It's in the DNA. Go to local parks anytime, during the week, during the weekend, what are they doing? They're playing ball. It's a way of life. It's a way, it's a vehicle to a better life and a better opportunity to an education, everything else that goes with it. The coaching in South Florida and the state of Florida does not get enough credit. These guys invest their own personal time and their own money to make sure guys have a chance to develop and get an opportunity at the next level. All levels, not everybody's a power five player, but all levels, you know, because it's a vocation for them too. It's their calling. So I love that. I, I, love, I love it because it's important. It's at the top of the food chain. And for me, that's what I want to be around. I want to be around people. I want to be in a community where this is, this is life, you know? This is life, and so I can't wait to dive in. I can't wait to see all the high school coaches that I've known for so long. Uh, now they're right around the corner, you know, which is a huge plus, and there's, it's such a densely populated, talent-rich area that it's just, there's a reason the entire country comes here to try to get talent, okay? Well, it's time to make sure the talent stays home. Hi, Mario. Ruthie Polinski with NBC6. Um, can you describe South Florida, Miami, in your words, and what, it, what the city, the location, means to you? Well, born and raised, you know, born and raised, I'm dating myself, but I already said I'm 51, so 1970, right? Um, I could start rattling off just the places without, I just don't want to cause nostalgia theater in here right now, you know, so. Um, home is home, you know, and this home is special. It's the most culturally diverse, vibrant, energized destination city in the entire world, right? I mean, the people, right? Because the location is awesome, right? It's always what they tell you in class and business management, right? Location, 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 but... There should be another line underneath that to say the people, the people, the people. I'm super, I'm beyond fired up to be able to be where I played, born and raised and everything else. Um, but again, these gentlemen, the people, the people, the people are the ultimate difference in everything. So it's a huge reason why I'm back home. It's a ginormous reason why these young men that are here, our student athletes, are going to continue to thrive and flourish and elevate standards because we're going to surround them by the best, you know? And uh, some of them might be from South Florida, some might not, but I think once you're, you're part of the community down here, you're part of it forever, so. 
Hi, Coach uh, Univision here. Can we have a few words in Spanish on how you feel and what are your expectations on the new role? Thank you. Como no, pero... Okay, sí, perfectamente bien, pero quiero que sepa que en, en mi tiempo en Oregón no había muchas oportunidades para hablar español. Así que <laughs> si se me va una palabra y... Más tarde, un disparate y más tarde hoy mi mamá agarra un zapato y me lo tira a la cabeza, pues me perdona. Pero, porque, y mi esposa sabe, me pasaba, si íbamos a, a comer, había un restaurante ahí pequeño, eh, creo que se llamaba Mucho Gusto, se llamaba el restaurante, y en vez de ordenar la comida y salir con la comida, me quedaba ahí a hablar español para practicar. Así que, pero no, esto es un honor eh, tremendo, de verdad. Eh, Imagínate, es, es difícil encontrar las palabras para explicar el, el honor, el privilegio que es este momento. Y todo lo que sé, eh, la manera de mejor explicarme es que voy a trabajar como nunca para poder darle éxito a todos nuestros jugadores, los que antes habían jugado aquí, la familia, la comunidad porque sé que la Universidad de Miami y los huracanes viven en el corazón de nuestra familia. How did I do? Yeah. It's hard. That was hard. My Spanish teacher over at Columbus is going to throw a shoe at me too. We'll do two more questions. Hey, Mario. Welcome back home, man. Thanks, brother. Hey, um, I know you're a grinder. You want to get out there already, probably, and, and start working. Yes. Uh, Timeline-wise, with coaching staff mm -hmm. and what you're looking for, I wanted to ask you about that. And then also, just your vision. It's a pretty good quarterback here. Just your vision for the offense and the defense and what you want to accomplish. You build it around your best players, for sure. I'll start with the coaching part. Uh, coaching staff-wise is first get with the coaches here. There's some really good coaches here, and get a chance to talk with them and interview them because they deserve that opportunity. I believe in respect. The sport of football, to me, is, man, it's the ultimate form of respect. And the lessons you learn in it, you got to make sure you implement them. And we will do that, as well as some other candidates. You always want to try to get a staff in place as soon as possible while respecting the processes that are currently going on. Preparation for a bowl game against Washington State, OK? So those things are hard to juggle. Um, but that's the timeline for that. As it happens, the sooner the better, but at the same time making sure that it's thorough, that it's fair, um, those things are critical for that nature. Um, in terms of the offense and defense, multiple on both sides of the ball and very aggressive. You build it around your best players. It's obvious watching from afar and watching film on the way in, there's not a better quarterback in the country, you know? And you got to make sure, and I see a lot of big bodies here, and I got to meet a lot of big bodies that, that the quarterback is upright, right? And those big bodies got to be in great shape to be able to protect and knock people back off the ball, right? Make sure that, that we're living in good third down situations. Making sure that the sticks are moving and we're scoring lots of points. Surrounded with explosive football players. I think anyone that watches our quarterback work, you can't help but be excited and be a member of this. So that's going to play a big role in recruiting as well. I'm going to rely on Tyler for that as well. So, But uh, I think those things are starting points as we dig more into film and evaluation. I see a lot, of, uh, a lot of guys with good length. I see some speed. Um, and I want to get with them on the field. I'd like to jump with them out there. I like to watch practice without you know, truly interfering in the process and respecting that side of it. I want to jump into the winter conditioning program, the fourth quarter program. I want to see guys bend, come out of their hips, redirect, change directions, accelerate, decelerate. I want to see guys react. I want to gauge instincts. I want to make sure that, that the specs and the criteria that we're trying to hit are truly evaluated and then make decisions from there as to, you know, an organizational chart, how to practice, uh, what, who fits at what best position, and then continue just keep bringing in talent, keep increasing the level of competition. That's the best way that we can enhance the roster and our productivity on the field. Back here, Michelle Kaufman from the Miami Herald. This is Welcome back, bienvenido. Um, my question is, how long have you dreamed of this moment? And when did it, if you could really tell us, when 
did it become a reality in your mind? When did you really make this decision that you're coming back? When did it become a reality that this could happen? And when did you decide to come here? And how long have you dreamed about this? Yeah, I, I really don't dream much. I just don't have time to dream. I mean, my days are very, very, very long and coffee laden. Um, croqueta laden, um, among some other things. But I, um, when you play here, you dream of it. And when you start working, you just, you, don't, you can't focus on that because you'll drive yourself crazy. You, you wouldn't be doing justice to those around you. And I can honestly say when I worked at Rutgers, I was working there for the next 100 years. And when I was at Oregon, that was where I was going to work and stay forever. And I loved every minute of all those places. Because it's not fair to say now, oh, I was dreaming of this. I, that's... It wouldn't be the case. It was, it was something that when you were here, man, could it actually happen one day? Because it just doesn't happen, right? It's as difficult as it gets in college football. And then when it finally came, and this was just, you know, I mean, I don't know for over a day now or hours, but uh, it's... Something else now. I will not share that with you. <laughs> I only shared that with my family and with the powers that be. It was just right when it had to happen. And I was respectful of everybody's process and, uh, and I want to continue to go along those lines. Again, everybody that's here, I know Don's got, I'm sure, a few things to say. He's in great shape, isn't he? Look at this guy. You know, um, just to everybody, once again, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because the best way to show it means the world to me is by just relentlessly attacking this opportunity and bringing every possible advantage, teaching moment, whatever it may be, to help our guys take that. Next step. They deserve that. These players deserve that. They deserve our best, all of us. And we're all going to give it to them. Thank you very much. Go Canes. Let's go, buddy. Number one jersey. I always want to be a skill guy. Once again, I'll remind you that Rudy Fernandez, the Vice President of Public Affairs and Communications and Chief of Staff for President Frank will be available if needed. I also want to thank everyone for joining us here today as we look forward to celebrating the Cristobal era here at the University of Miami. And how about one more round of applause for our head coach, Mario Cristobal.